We tested 20 bikes, all priced between £2,800 and £3,650 and all with 120 to 150 mil of rear wheel travel as part of Trail Bike of the Year 2019. And yes, you guessed it, we're back here again with the Santa Cruz 5010, which is a perennial favourite in the top ranked bikes in the test, but it's never quite a winner for one very good reason. It's a great fun trail bike, but it's not very well priced. There are various versions of the 5010 on offer, both alloy, the regular C carbon, and the CC carbon as well. You also get 27.5 plus or 29 inch versions of the bike. We had the alloy R plus build, so it came with the plus tire option in 27.5 inch diameter, and it comes in at 3,499 pounds. Santa Cruz released a new version of the 5010 later on in 2018 and it didn't have a massive amount of changes from the previous version, a few tweaks here and there, especially around the BB area where the shock is mounted. It still has that upper link VPP suspension system rather than the lower link one you'll have seen on things like the Mega Hightower or the Bronson and Santa Cruz say that this is because it's a bit more trail orientated and that that system works better for these bikes where you kind of want better pedalling performance rather than full on downhill suspension. Up front you get a Fox Rhythm 34 fork with 130mm of travel and at the back there's a performance level DPS shock. Santa Cruz supply a SRAM NX Eagle group set, so this comes with an 11 to 50 tooth cassette rather than a 10 to 50. And it does mean that if you want to change up to a slightly wider range cassette in the future and to drop some weight from that rather weighty NX cassette, you'll have to update the free hub as well. This 5010 rolls on SRAM hubs with a pair of WTB i29 rims. These are fairly wide and that's handy because there's a pair of Maxxis 2.6 inch tyres. Up front you get a Mini and DHF and at the back there's a slightly faster rolling Recon. SRAM also provide the brakes and here it's the Guide T with 180mm rotors front and back. Now the T is the most budget version of these brakes and we'll talk about that later on. Finishing kit is a range of race face and WTB stuff and it's all fairly reasonable. There's also a race face effect 150mm dropper post and a WTB Silverado saddle which didn't cause any problems for any of our testers. Overall this bike comes in at 15.2 kilos for a size large which is fairly heavy. Santa Cruz offer the 5010 in a wide number of options. There's alloy frames and two different versions of the carbon ones as well. You also get a 27.5 plus or a 27.5 option for each of those builds as well. We have the 27.5 plus version in the alloy frame and the R plus build and it comes in at £3,499. Within the linkage of the frame there's a little flip chip that allows you to change the geometry depending on the wheel size option you're running. Because we had this slightly larger diameter plus tyres, we ran it in the low setting. However, if I had regular sized tyres, I'd probably run it in the low setting as well anyway. In this large frame, in the low setting, you get a 457mm reach with 426mm chainstays. So fairly well balanced and that is a quite a short back end. You also get a 66 degree head angle, which is reasonably slack and pretty much on par for the rest of the bikes in Trail Bike of the Year. So the reason why the 5010 appears in every iteration of Trail Bike of the Year is that it's a true trail bike. It's not trying to be a little enduro bike and it's not trying to be a big beefy cross country bike. It's a real traditional trail bike. If you're the kind of rider who wants to eke out every little trail detail, whether it's a, a route to pop off or a turn to slap into, this probably is the kind of bike for you. If you're looking for a bike to hit big chunky downhill terrain then you probably know what you're looking for and it won't be the 5010 and that's okay because the 5010 is a great UK trail bike if you go and ride in the woods or you want to go and ride around a trail centre too. Despite its 15.2 kilo weight it is a bike that doesn't ride that heavy 
and I reckon that's largely thanks to the suspension system which is fairly neutral so it doesn't get too bogged down in its travel and also that Maxxis Recon tyre that rolls pretty fast at the back so it doesn't feel too sluggish. This certainly helps on climbs and also between the trees when you're trying to accelerate from corner to corner. The suspension system itself is really well developed. As mentioned, it is very neutral, so it pedals nicely. It is also, however, well controlled towards the end of its stroke. It's fairly progressive, though there is a little bit of kickback when you hit big jumps and drops. The Fox 34 up front kind of mirrors this character as well. It is a 34mm stanchion fork, so if you're a bigger rider or one who's looking to hit really fast, steep terrain, it is quite flexy. However, for those trails that are a little bit more mellow, it's a real nice partner for the bike. It's the most basic version as well, the Rhythm 34, and that comes with a grip damper. I actually don't think this is a bad fork. It is nice and smooth, and while the damper isn't as sort of sophisticated as, say, a Grip 2, obviously, it still doesn't feel that bad. And for a budget fork, sadly not with a budget price, it is a good option. In terms of other budget kit on this bike though, there are a few downsides. The Guy T-Brake really is not up to spec, especially on a bike that is potentially quite fast and fun, and certainly not one that costs three and a half grand. At this price point as well, we really feel that the NX cassette just shouldn't be here. If it was a carbon frame, maybe you'd just about get away with it, but it's an alloy frame with the heaviest Eagle cassette out there. If you do want to upgrade to a lighter one or when this wears out and you want that extra 10 to 50 tooth range from a GX or above, you've got to replace the free hub as well. So this is really fundamental as to why the 5010 never wins Trail Bike of the Year. It's just such poor value for money. If we're only assessing the 5010 on how much fun we had on it, how the bike rides, we could probably give it a four, four and a half out of five star review. However, we do have to take price into consideration. If we were just looking at it from a value point of view, it'd probably only get two out of five. So overall, this is why it doesn't make it into the top echelons of Trail Bike of the Year, but it's still a bike that we enjoy seeing in the test. And one, if you're not that bothered about the value, you should probably think about two. So am I being harsh on the 5010? If a bike ride's really good, does the value really matter? Or do you need to know that you've got a great deal when you've bought a bike? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe.